Making multiplayer games in Pygame has been something I've been interested in for quite a while now. If you go back and look at my old videos, you can actually see time-lapse footage of me working on one. However, for a long time I've wanted to make a video talking about how I go about making multiplayer games in Pygame. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. So the first thing that is needed for making a multiplayer game is some sort of library that can be used to send data over a network. For this I'm using the socket module which comes built into Python and essentially acts as a Python wrapper for the Unix socket related system calls, which simply means you can run a server and a client which can connect to each other and send information back and forth. So now that we have a module which allows for internet based communication, the next thing we need is a protocol which will accommodate for this communication. Now if you've done any research into networking, you've probably stumbled across TCP and UDP, which are two different protocols which allow us to do this. I won't cover all the differences between these protocols since there are quite a few, but I'll quickly cover the main ones. Whenever you send a piece of data over the internet, which from now on I'll be referring to as a packet, if you use TCP, basically what this means is that the sender of the packet can guarantee that the receiver of the packet will indeed receive the packet and it will be uncorrupt and in the same order that the packets were sent in. This is useful for things like transferring files, where obviously even one byte of the file becoming corrupt would render the entire thing useless. This is why TCP is the protocol behind a lot of the other web-based protocols we use today, such as FTP, HTTP, and SMTP. However, the trade-off of this guaranteed delivery is that TCP is slower than the other option, which is UDP. With UDP, when a packet is sent, it has no guarantee of arriving uncorrupted on the other end, or even arriving at all. Essentially, the UDP protocol just takes the packet, sends it, and then doesn't waste any more time worrying about whether or not the packet arrived safely or not. This makes UDP ideal for working with continuous streams of data, such as video or audio calls, since if one packet containing audio or video data is lost, it's not worth resending as by the time we can send a new packet, the packet which was dropped has either already been outdated or has been resent due to the nature of the continuous data stream. This protocol essentially trades the security of packets for, this, for speed, and this makes it the perfect choice for what we want to do, which is essentially to send a continuous stream of data between the server and the client. And for this reason, UDP is typically the protocol I use when I want to make multiplayer games. So with that all sorted, the next thing for me to do was write some sort of library on top of sockets which it would allow me to do things quickly. Because UDP is what's known as a connectionless protocol, the library I create must contain some sort of abstraction which allows me to keep track of connected players. I do this by using a list containing the IP addresses of all of the connected clients. Then when I send the client's data, I can do so by looping through each connection and using the .sendTo method to send the data. Now the question becomes, what data should we actually be sending? Well, for the current multiplayer project I'm working on, my intention is to create a 2D clone of the Minecraft minigame Bed Wars. I got it. I killed him. Wait, no, 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 no. No, I did it, I did it. I did it. I couldn't kill him. He's insane. So, if you're thinking about the type of data we will need, we will obviously need the positions of each player, as well as information such as the player's inventory, animation states, attack states, and probably some other information I am yet to consider. So the next thing I did was create the so-called client. This would essentially be the game itself. So I grabbed my Pygame game framework and quickly threw together a platformer controller. Then I used my level editor to create the small island. And just like that, we had a simple game. The next thing I wanted to do was tackle the networking itself. Using the above mentioned framework, I quickly created a server script, which would be responsible for receiving the player data from each of the clients and then distributing that information to all of the connected clients. At this point, I essentially had the bare bone basics of a multiplayer game. Each client would calculate their movement, just like in any other single player game, but then instead of just showing that calculation on the screen in the form of a player character, we would send that information to the server, who then sends your movement information to all of the other connected clients. Funny enough, at this point in development, I posted a gif of the progress I was making to the Pygame community discord, and a really cool guy by the name of SkysurferCon reached out and asked if he could help me with the artwork for the game, to which I said yes, because artwork isn't really my strong point and I wanted to just be able to focus on the networking stuff. But now we have a problem, actually we have multiple problems, but one of the big ones is, if the clients are calculating their own movement, then there's nothing stopping them from hacking their game and then just sending packets to the server that don't actually reflect their true position. 
Now there are a few ways we can go about fixing this. The way I chose to do it probably isn't the best method in all honesty, is on the server side to simply look at the different positions the player is sending the server and if the difference between the positions in the packets is greater than a certain threshold then we can assume that the player is attempting to teleport at which point we can take the appropriate action. Another server side check we can perform is looking at the positions that the player is sending and checking them against terrain to validate that the player is not attempting to fly hack. In all honesty this method of validating server inputs probably isn't the best. The way you're supposed to do it involves calculating all of the client's actions on the server side as well as the client side and then validating that they are in sync and sending the results back to the client. And for quite a while this was a system I had in place. However, I would keep running into issues with the server's representation of the client and the client's representation of itself with becoming very badly out of sync. So eventually I just scrapped the system in favor of the one I described above and so far I haven't had any major issues. Another one of the issues I was facing was lag, since obviously with networking there is some physical delay between sending packets, and there are many different ways that lag can be compensated. A very common method and the method I used was, when a player receives information about the positions of the other client from the server, instead of these positions being used to display where in the world these other clients are, it would store the packet in a buffer which in my case is a dictionary containing lists of the stored packets where usernames can be used to look up the packets which have been stored about the certain user. And then only when the buffer reaches a certain size do we start playing the data stored in the buffer back onto the screen. However, there is still the issue that there might be large gaps between the data in this buffer. For example, the first three frames could have a difference of one between them, but then on the fourth frame, the client experienced a bit of lag and therefore sent its update packet a little bit later and there is now a difference of 3 between the 3rd and 4th buffer frame. The simple fix here is to use linear interpolation, which essentially, when given two points, can work out any point between these two points, such that all three points will be collinear. So in our client code, instead of just playing through the buffer frames and drawing the player at each position, for each frame we look forward to the next point in the buffer, and depending on the difference between them, we use linear interpolation to generate a certain number of points between them, and then we can use this new set of points to move the clients. Here you can see the results of what I've just been speaking about. So I'm in South Africa and the server is being hosted in New York. And when I move around on the right window over here, we can see that the left window sees the movement and the movement is smooth. However, there is a small delay between me starting moving on the right window and the player beginning to move on the left window. And this is because of the buffer, which has to fill up to a certain number of packets first. There was also some small invisible changes I did to improve performance, such as compressing all of the data on the surface side using GZIP before sending it to the client side. So with movement working nicely, the next thing I needed to do was add some projectiles, which was done in a similar manner to the movement, where the X and Y velocity of the bullets would be calculated when a client shoots a projectile, and that information would then be sent to the server, which would relay the projectile's information to the other clients for them to render. Interestingly enough, there was an issue this caused, which you can see here, where it's clear that the projectiles being shot weren't coming from where the player was standing, and this was because of the buffer system. So the way I ended up working around this was to just keep track of where the, of where the player's position was 10 packets ago, which is the number, which is the same size as the, what the buffer needs to fill up to. And then for the network projectile, we use this position instead of the player's current position, and that pretty much fixed the issue. And that is pretty much where I am up to with development so far. I will post another update video once I've made more progress. Before I go, I would like to apologize for not uploading in 9 months. This is actually my first video of the year, which is pretty scary. I will probably make an update video explaining what happened at some point. Anyways, I would like to thank everyone for the continued support, and a special thank you to Fix for the continued support on Patreon. Thanks guys.